The world's largest human genetics community has once again come together, and this time in the City of Angels. The ASHG meeting provides a forum for the presentation and discussion of cutting edge science in all areas of human genetics. Stay tuned, we have a lot to cover. ASHG TV starts right now. Hi everyone, my name is Autria Godfrey and I am your host today at the 2022 ASHG Annual Meeting. Coming up on today's episode, we will have exclusive conversations with leading experts in the field of human genetics. We'll learn about some of the organizations and universities at the forefront of genetics and genomics research. Plus, we'll be highlighting some of the key topics being discussed at this year's meeting. But first, we kick things off on this third day by hitting the conference floor to hear from you, the members, about what the ASHG membership means to you. Let's see what some of you had to say. Being an ASHG member to me means being a part of a society that has members that are involved in research in genetics, genomics, and precision medicine related activities and you get the chance to see the interesting things they're doing, collaborate and potentially network in when you come for events like this. I've been a member for 30 years. Um, what it means to be a member to me, it's of course the, 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 the enlightenment of learning new things, but it's the connections with the colleagues, with the collaborations that you can make and the difference that you can make worldwide, not just in your little niche. And then you find out that certain techniques, certain uh, train of thought or, or, or a paper that you just read that you thought was maybe not meaningless, but not as important at the time, you come back and you meet the person who did it and you know all the things that are behind it, it's absolutely awesome. As uh, students uh, working in the academi academia, we read a lot of papers. So uh, during in, in the, this conference, uh, we could talk to those uh, authors for those famous papers. And of course, it will provide opportunity for us to, to do networking and provide positions for uh, like looking for postdoc, looking for grad students, looking for uh, other jobs. Yeah, I think it's great to uh, attend here. So being a member of ASHG, I think, is really um, sort of a, been an important part of my career here as a geneticist. So uh, I got my first talk at ASHG. Uh, I got my first author publication, uh, was published with the American Journal. So it's always been sort of one of the milestones in, in first places um, when I thought about my career moving forward. So it's been great to have that support of the community and have the opportunity to, to be part of that. I love the membership here because like I gonna like exposed to other researchers and to uh, find like other aspects like see how it's like it's a big and the prestigious conference so I met people from all over the world uh, see what's the advanced technology and research in my field so um, I'm feeling like uh, comfortable like to come every year. Before I came to this meeting I didn't realize that there are so many people in the world that are working in the field of genetics. So uh, right here, right now, you I mean like lots of people, lots of members encourage me to continue to focus in gen genetics. Something new all the time. Yes, I'm looking for like the coming like ACG next year, every year like. <laughs> The increasing participation of African scientists and communities is transforming human genetics and genomics and generating profound new insights to ask novel questions to advance human health. We had the chance to speak with Dr. Charles Rotimi, current ASHG president, to discuss all of this and why diversity in genetics is so crucial. Genomics in Africa, I think we've been able to sow the seed, uh, especially in the context of uh, H3 Africa, the human heritage and health in Africa populations. We have turned the tide to a very large extent by engaging African scientists across Africa and giving everybody the opportunity to participate and to study um, you know, health issues that are important to African people. So right now, I think what we need to do is to recognize that achievement and provide additional resources so that we can continue to build on that success story, uh, so that we can truly 
uh, you know, allow African um, you know, populations and scientists to fully realize the gains and progress in human genetics and genomics. We are getting extremely excited about the fact that we now have a very good way to understand how human beings that migrated out of Africa about 100,000 years ago, um, you know, interbred with uh, archaic humans um, in the, you know, the places we call Europe and Asia today. Uh, in such a way now that we are beginning to appreciate how that may have some biological functions and also uh, helping us to understand human migration and you know, history. And also from the medical point of view, um, we are beginning to make very good progress in how we are using genomics to design new therapeutics and to inform how we treat individuals in the context of the practice of medicine which I usually refer to as the sample size of one, is you and your doctor. You know, so we are beginning to get some very good insights uh, into how we can actually use genomics to tailor medicine you know, to individuals, reduce adverse effects, and, um, and, and also to be more efficient and, and effective in the therapeutic strategies that we developed. You know, so I, uh, I think uh, genomics is really uh, quite exciting. And for me personally, I look at genomics as um, almost like a kid in a candy store. And um, you're always discovering something new. Um, and uh, so it's pretty exciting. And the future looks extremely bright. Yeah. Dr. Brendan Lee has served on several ASHG groups and committees throughout his distinguished career, but up next he will be overseeing the organization during its upcoming 75th anniversary year as president and joins us now in studio to discuss a little bit more about his vision. Good morning, thanks for your time. Good morning. So first off, congratulations on being elected as president. What does this upcoming year look like for you? Well, first it's a great honor for me to have to be able to lead the society. I, I literally grew up in this society. I remember <laughs> attending my first meeting um, maybe almost 30 years ago wow. as a graduate student. You know, I think the American Society of Human Genetics has uh, always been a leader in the genetics and genomic space. Um, this 75th anniversary is uh, not only a landmark, but a great opportunity for us to um, take account of our history, our past, and really build on that to launch a future and I am just delighted to be able to be part of the leadership to help drive this. It's quite a year to serve as president. Do you feel like there's a little added pressure? I, you know, I think our society and our world are facing uh, really turbulent times on the scientific front, uh, on the societal front, and I think ASHG has a, an important role to play for in that. Any particular things that you would like to highlight about your mission during your time as leader? You know, as you know, um, we had a strategic plan that uh, we implemented several years ago, and the vision for the society is for everybody to realize the benefits of genetics and genomics research. Uh, and I would extend that to everybody everywhere. Um, and I think when you think about that vision, we as a research society want to focus on how research information, the power of research, um, how science can impact lives and the public. And I think that as part of that is to recognize um, also when our society and our field have had negative impacts. And, and that, has, that is a big part of the history project which the society has sponsored. I think that's the foundation to recognize our history, but I think the focus for the next year is to build on that and to look at all the great science and benefits that human genetics and genomics has empowered. Um, I, as a physician scientist, have been very focused on therapy. When I look back at the very first meeting that I attended 30 years ago, we could barely make diagnoses clinically. And now with all the research and science, we've been able to apply molecular tools to make very specific diagnoses diagnoses and how they've actually empowered therapies. And that'll be an important theme in the future. The progress and the improvements over the past 75 years, I mean, as you just mentioned, have been absolutely incredible. What does the road look like for the next 75 years of ASHG? Well, I think, you know, we've been enormously successful, I think, in terms of what we have achieved to date, but there is so much more. One element I would like to see us um, begin to also uh, impact, uh, 
beyond sort of the science of, of improving health of our communities with genetics and genomics is also to continue to grow our leadership, I think, in terms of um, um, broadly in society, in terms of policy uh, as, it, as it impacts the world broadly. This is especially important where there has been, frankly, throughout the world an attack on science. And I think we have a very important role to show that um, science uh, is, is really uh, something that crosses all boundaries, whether it's political or societal or cultural, and um, is really the one thing that can you know, advance all of our qualities of life. Absolutely. Well, again, congratulations on being elected incoming president. Best of luck on that big 75th year coming up. Thank you. Thanks for your time. For more than 70 years, AJHG has been producing wide-ranging, high-impact human genetics research. Editor-in-Chief Dr. Bruce Korf joins us now in studio with more on how you have worked over the last several years to improve the already sterling reputation of the journal. Good morning. Good morning. Let's talk a little bit about the inception of AJHG. It was one of the first initiatives of ASHG. That's my understanding, yeah, but before my time. But <laughs> yes. Um, yes, indeed, I think um, the journal was the first kind of major ASHG initiative, I think even before there was a, an annual meeting. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the different journals that AJHG publishes. What are you looking for? So we are looking for the best quality science that is of interest to the members and to the, to the genetics research community in general. You know, genetics is a huge area, really, human genetics, and there are many, many different ways to look at it from a research point of view. And what we are hoping to do is to really sort of keep abreast of, of the latest in what's going on in genetics to sort of light the way in terms of where the opportunities are and to showcase the best quality research from people in the field and, and really use it as a way to disseminate information in a timely way. So for members who maybe have not checked it out just yet, what can they expect from AJHG and then also HGG Advances, the, the sister publication? What they can expect is to see um, really high quality research presented in an understandable and um, you know, uh, really uh, copy edited high quality way. Uh, you know, we put a lot of attention into working with authors to providing them the best service as, as their papers go through the system. It's a peer reviewed journal. There's a lot of attention to um, being sure that the science is right and you know, I think readers can get a snapshot of what is going on in the field um, by perusing the pages. And I should say that, you know, we're constantly interested in seeing not just what have people been doing, but what are people doing and where do we see the field going? And we, we try our best to um, make no assumptions of, you know, what we want to see be submitted. If it's human genetics, we're interested in it. So you mentioned kind of what it is you are looking for. What is the benefit to members for submitting their research? I think the benefit is um, obviously in the long run getting the attention of the community in a, a high impact journal that um, people will read. And you know, if you want your research to reach the widest possible audience, this is a way to make that happen. And it sounds like making sure that not only the research is top notch, but also that the way that it's presented is easily digestible is, is a top priority. That's right. I mean, there, there is a lot of attention to consistency, to copy editing. Um, so, you know, the, the journey that the paper goes on begins with peer review and then it goes straight to production once um, it's passed through peer review. And what comes out at the other end, I think most authors would say is a lot better than what was submitted in the first place. <laughs> Very nice. All right, you just mentioned that you're already starting to think ahead, looking forward to the 75th anniversary of AJHG. What is some of the most exciting research that's been published recently? Well, you know, I think for a long time, the journal was, I think, at the vanguard of, of what you might call rare disease discovery. And it was one of the journals that I think published the most in terms of identifying the genetic basis for these conditions and then ultimately moving towards function and even towards therapeutics. But I'd say in the last few years, the ability to look at so-called complex disorders, conditions that are not determined by changes in just one gene, but by combinations of genes, has become an increasingly important part of the research landscape in genetics. And it is an area that the journal has really worked hard to, to provide coverage of. Well, congratulations on the success already, and we look forward to what you have in store for the 75th anniversary. Thank, Thank you, you for your time this morning. Thanks very much. 
genetics and genomics research has grown alongside the development of new technologies that have pushed the field even further. Let's take a look at what some of these new technologies are and what we need to keep in mind as the field continues to grow. One thing I've been seeing in this meeting quite a bit is um, therapeutics. And, uh, you know, before, before COVID, five years ago or so, you'd come, there'd be a lot of science about um, research that's going on is sort of like understanding the underlying biology of disease. And now uh, I see a lot of new therapeutics, like how can we actually address these diseases and a lot more um, diversity of options. So, uh, you know, five years ago, we probably would have assumed the only way to cure some of these things is to do gene editing, to change out the gene. Um, but there's so many new options uh, to sort of leave the genome the way it is but, but uh, you know, do small molecules and other things that will real, really help uh, address genetic conditions in the long term, uh, but without changing the, the genome itself. One of the things that we're seeing now is there are dimensions of the genome that we've never studied because there was never anything we could do about it. And so there, we really were not paying attention to that dimension. Um, and uh, like epigenomics is really one area where that's, that's happened, that people have been working on that, but it's not really been the focus. Now that we have ways to intervene with that, it actually drives new understanding that now we have tools, we have a hammer, let's go start looking for nails so we can figure out how to address things we never thought we could address before. So yeah, really great opportunities here. There is so much to cover and we don't want you to miss a minute. Remember, you can always catch the latest episode of ASHG TV on any of the televisions spread throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the ASHG website, and of course, always on our YouTube and Twitter channels. Let's start off our tour of organizations and universities that are at the frontier of genetics and genomics research. First stop, the European Joint Program on Rare Diseases, which is the initiative that builds the European ecosystem for rare diseases. Check it out. The objective of the European Joint Program on Rare Diseases is really to uh, create the rare diseases research ecosystem. Within the JPRD, we have funders, we have policy makers with the ministries, we have clinicians, researchers, research institutes, as well as patient organizations that are working under one single umbrella to create the rare diseases research ecosystem to accelerate the whole value chain from the diagnosis to the therapy development. Education is really a core component of the value chain uh, to push for more diagnosis and treatments for patients. So for us it's really important that more uh, patients being involved in the co-creation of the research projects. It really brings everybody from the research funder to the academic to the patient into the room to look at the problems jointly and be able to work together for the future on the seamless and effortless pipeline of R&D innovation. The goal of CAST is to improve the utility of genome science for everyone by studying complex relationships between genetics, individual behavior, socioeconomic status, and environmental factors influencing health. CAST is a center of excellence in genome science funded by the NIH, and its focus is on leaving no one behind. Currently, at mixed individuals, are not represented well in genome analysis and studies. Because the linkage disequilibrium structure of the genome is different between different ethnicities, it's difficult to translate the information that we found in these GWAS studies into other populations, particularly admixed populations. The goal of CAST is to be able to set aside categorizations of individuals into different ancestries and to be able to jointly analyze them and also be able to use these findings to predict the relative risk of everyone in the United States regardless of their ancestral backgrounds. With business
businesses and operations in more than 100 countries and regions, BGI Group brings together BGI Research, a world-leading institute that produces groundbreaking scientific research, MGI Tech, a world leader in the development of next-generation sequencing technology, and BGI Genomics, a global supplier of diagnostic testing and genetic sequencing services. BGI is a real powerhouse in the life sciences and healthcare arenas. Look at the publications that they've made just the last 12 months, key papers in science and nature. Perhaps our most exciting recent breakthrough have been in the emerging field of spatial temporary omics. BGI Research's latest innovation of this field is Stereosec, a revolutionary new spatial resolved single cell omic technology. But more than that, they've also become a key provider of tools and solutions to the global market, providing sequencing machines, providing automation solutions and reagents and consumables. Our goal is to identify advancements that will improve the welfare of humanity and leave a positive impact on mankind and the world around us. All mix for all. The next generation of personalized healthcare promises better diagnosis and treatment by using risk scores developed from complex genetic data and analysis. Based in Helsinki, the Intervene project uses artificial intelligence to harness vast but underused international genomic data banks in collaboration spanning 17 leading research organizations across 10 countries. We take a flight to Finland. The Intervene project is working to develop next generation tools to capture the genetic risk for various diseases. Intervene altogether combines data from over 1.7 million individuals. We can do preventive medicine rather than treating people when they develop the disease, which is often too late. There is a need of project to put together people thinking together and putting together the data. Traditional analytical approach, they do not scale to the size of this data set. And so we need to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to combine this data. We have taken two disease areas, coronary heart disease, and another one is breast cancer. And we've taken these into clinical pilot projects where we utilize the genetic information alongside with the traditional risk factors. The mission of the Gilbert Family Foundation's Gene Therapy Initiative is to develop curative therapies that address the underlying genetic abnormalities in NF1 patients. Let's check it out. The Gene Therapy Initiative is one of our major research initiatives that focuses on developing a curative treatment for neurofibromatosis, which entails the correction of a mutation in the NF1 gene. The GTI Initiative is very broad. We've seen what can be done in the lab and we are very confident and very excited that within the coming years that we'll be able to now do the translation from our preclinical animal models into human patients and start helping people, which is the main emphasis of what we do. I think the future of the Gene Therapy Initiative is quite bright. We love to share with the NF1 patient community and the caregivers and families that are affected that the state of the Gene Therapy Initiative is, is good and there's much to be hopeful about. That's a wrap for us here at the 2022 ASHG Annual Meeting. We hope you have enjoyed the episode and all of the genetic and genomic content that we brought you over the past week. If you didn't get a chance to watch it all just yet, you can always find all of the episodes from this past week on the homepage of the ASHG website, on the in-house channels in several of our partner hotels, and of course, we are always on on our Twitter and YouTube channels. Thanks again for joining us here on ASHG TV. We look forward to seeing you next year for our 75th anniversary of ASHG in our nation's capital. Have a great one. We'll see you in DC.